Today we are printing out more G-Boxes because they're almost sold out on Amazon, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Definitely not enjoying printing so many of these boxes. So this week I'm gonna try and figure out how to, maybe there's another way to manufacture these, whether it's a mold that I do here and I can just pop out a bunch of them, or maybe talk to some injection molding factories, see if that's possible. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, start cleaning, here we go. Got print in place, hinges and compliant mechanisms for the openings here. So now I just pop off this magnetic plate and start printing some more. You gotta have these. These are, you have to. If anyone knows how to automate the cleaning process for resin, please leave a comment below. If anyone knows why this kind of like white kind of stuff is getting on here and it I got all the resin off I think but it still like looks kind of scratchy if anyone knows let me know I highly recommend this respirator type mask thing you can just whip it on so easily <laughs> usually it's easy I don't know what the hell I'm doing there we go, you just drop it on. The reason I like this one is just because it doesn't fog up my glasses. These things, the ones that come with the printer and stuff, they just fog up my glasses. It just gets annoying when I'm cleaning. So make sure you always wear protective gear if you're going to be around resin breathing in that shit. It's no good. And some gloves, lifestyle. So another reason I wanna try and get away from just having to print all these is one, it's expensive. It costs like $3 per box. I need the cost to be like a dollar or less to really make serious profit and it's just slower so maybe if I could pop out you know 100 of these a day instead of 10 12 you know I make more profit I'm gonna try and figure out that this week figure out maybe make some calls do some manufacturing plants or some print on demand places don't think I'll be able to get it much made much cheaper but I'm gonna just see so that's the the goal so Amber and I have been thinking about the Meku mold maker that's like, you know, makes a mold of your product. We've been thinking about doing 3D printed molds. We've been watching YouTube videos. The challenge is that our shapes are very complex. We don't know how to make the mold exactly. The good thing is that if we can figure this out, this costs $3 to make, but if we could do it with concrete or plaster, it could cost 10 cents to make. Uh, and we could make, you know, 20, 40, 50 a day, which is very good for scalability. Let's see if we, there's a faster, cheaper way to produce these bad boys. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we already know that people buy these. You know, people are buying these pretty much every day. We're almost sold out on Amazon. We've got like 17 left and they usually start to go out faster once you get past 20 because um, it'll be like only 17 left so people will start buying them more just got to figure out you know if I'm trying to hit the 10k challenge then I've got to figure out a way to at least make a thousand to two thousand of these uh, per month preferably me not making them Another thing that I experienced this week was I got sick last week or the week before with food poisoning. It was terrible, but it really made me think about how much this business depends on me. So if I am sick or if there, I can't get out here to make stuff, you know, that could really mess up the supply chain. You know, you don't want to be doing everything in your business if you can help it. So the universe is giving me lessons every week. This week is manufacturing and still brand identity. The who, the what, and the why. We're going to Nashville. Amber has been called to jury duty. <laughs> so we got to go talk to the courts and see if she's uh, going to be chosen or not. We're talking about decentralized social media and the future of the world and how it's all about brands and Web3 
Yeah, so good luck, y'all. Today we are finishing up the prints for a new batch of G-Boxes to go to Amazon. This is the first time I'm gonna be trying multicolor, so we'll see how that goes. You know, essentially I need to print like 50 of these a day, Monday through Friday. I'm gonna be reaching out to manufacturers to see, you know, what's our best option, what makes the most sense financially, and you know, maybe I'll end up with like five of these resin printers, printing 10 each a day. I don't really wanna do that, but maybe that's what it'll take for the first batch to get like a mold or something. Yeah, this is the life of a 3D print designer for print on demand. You're just constantly printing until you can get a mold or get an outsource, or I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, I know a lot of people out there really want to, or have like a print farm in their garage or whatever, but that's not what I want to be doing. I want to be traveling the world and meeting people and exploring and eating different food. You know, maybe make a phone call and be like, hey, I need a batch of a thousand and then have that batch sent somewhere to get it packaged and then sent to Amazon. I don't know. I'd rather be in Blender designing. I broke my other Tupperware box for cleaning. I'm using water washable resin, hey hey. Amber let me use this today, which is this huge thing. So I'm thinking maybe I can put like a bunch of them in here, like four or five or six and just shake them up. <laughs> Cause that's my least favorite part is cleaning, printing and cleaning, just don't enjoy it. So I'm trying to find a way to make that shit go quicker. <laughs> oh no. You already got a chip on it. Oh. Got it. I do have to say, I highly, highly, highly recommend water washable resin. I did buy like a ton of this 91 alcohol, but I haven't used any of it because I've just been using water. I would have to spend a shit ton of money just buying tons of rubbing alcohol just to clean all these boxes. If you're doing mass production, uh, water washable resin may be for you. Just note that you do need to let the water cure in the sun before you can throw it out. So uh, you can't just throw it out, but uh, I know people are gonna say that in the comments. Oh, no, 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 no. Another perfect batch. Looks pretty good. So I can get about nine to 10 of these from one bottle. So they're roughly like, you know, three to four dollars each. Then there's some leftover goo at the end. And then I just use that to make a shit ton of these guys. These little wall mounts until the goo runs out. So that way I use every single drop. <laughs> gotta get, gotta make sure we're getting our money's worth, right? Yeah. I'll say this once, but I gotta say it again. Resin printing, even though it's toxic and tedious, it's still amazing speed-wise. I can print one of these in one hour, but right now I'm printing 30 of these and it's still gonna take only one hour. So if I were printing this in FDM, one, it would look way shittier, and two, each time it printed a new one, it would have to take the same amount of time per piece. This I can print 30 of them in the same amount of time it prints one. That is incredible. All right, look at that. Black's looking good. The G box got the ground mounts, the back mounts. Vibes that love. Yeah. We're also been kind of switching up the idea of what is vibes.love. What are our products? Who are we really trying to help? We kind of went one way. Now we're kind of thinking the other way. Well, so Amber and I are probably going to rebuild the, uh, the who, what, and the why. So we have a few more days in May for brand consciousness. If you want to follow along and do kind of what we're doing, there are PDFs you can download for free on my website. Just go to ptt.live. You know, I'm just figuring this out. I don't have all the answers. So if you want to follow along, come on, let's go. Oh!